she can lift the biggest, heaviest machinery ever built. The cargo is very expensive and sensitive. And then carry it anywhere in the world. Get away. On her very first job as a super heavy lift ship, Beluga Bremen's crew will test drive new technology. Never do pray, live it more hooked on. Battle unpredictable weather. And face unknown challenges. Oh, that the pier is not gonna go last. It's a 20,000 kilometer adventure from Asia to the Americas on the mightiest ship afloat. Beluga Bremen is one tough lady. Purpose built at a cost of $75 million, she has just one job to lift and carry the world's heaviest cargo. Her two monster cranes are the strongest ever mounted on a multi purpose heavy lift ship, and together they can bench press over 1,400 tons. That's a lot of muscle and she's going to need all of it on her very first job that begins here in Kwantan, Malaysia. The speed is 9.2. As Beluga Bremen navigates into the port, two giant mining machines called autoclaves are being delivered to the pier. These 800-ton washing machines separate gold from rocks and mud. Beluga Bremen's job is to carry them halfway around the world. That one quarter, yeah. But first, she'll have to load them on board. It's the heaviest cargo the Beluga Group has ever tried to lift. Thank you. Beluga Bremen is brand new, but her master, Lutz Helt, is a veteran captain. We have to load uh, two autoclaves at this port. That will be uh, the most heavy stuff are lifted until now and it will be a challenge for the crew and me. Captain Helt is Beluga Group's top gun, their test skipper for some of the strongest heavy lift ships the world has ever seen. You are ready for within aft, please. And on her maiden voyage, Captain Helt wants to find out how tough Beluga Bremen really is. What I'm really curious of is the behaving of the vessel. It's really totally new for us. Bremen is the prototype for a whole new class of ships called super heavy lifters. She has to perform well on this job. Seven more, just like her, are being built at a cost of over half a billion dollars. From Kuantan, she will sail to Shanghai to pick up more heavy cargo. Then it's across the vast Pacific Ocean, through the Panama Canal, to a remote port in the Dominican Republic to unload. It's a 20,000 kilometer journey. Five meters ahead, please, Ben. Halfway around the world. As soon as Beluga Bremen touches the pier, there's no time to waste. It's Captain Helt's ship, but the job of loading the giant autoclaves belongs to his second in command, Chief Officer Jorn Gafkor. challenge is we have to load these two autoclaves in one day, uh, time is money. Before he can start the lift, Jorn's first job is to install Bremen's unique stabilizer pontoon. It's an extra ballast tank designed for super heavy lifting. As big as a bungalow, it weighs 115 tons. There's not so many vessels in the world with this kind of stabilizer pontoon. All heavy lift ships use ballast systems to keep them from capsizing during a lift. At 168 meters long and 25 meters wide, Beluga Bremen has 48 ballast tanks inside her hull that automatically fill or empty water to keep the ship level as cargo is loaded. Installed on the outside of the hull, the stability pontoon gives the ship more counterweight to lift even heavier cargo and they'll need it. The dangerous combination of the autoclave's size and weight could sink the ship. Without this pontoon, we cannot do the lift. Uh, the vessel will capsize and will fall down to the pier. 
A huge 40-ton steel arm connects the pontoon to the ship. Jorn directs the crane to fit it into the tiny slot at the center of the pontoon. And the water is a little bit chubby, a little bit, the pontoon is moving. Water is Jorn's biggest worry. Heavy lift cranes don't mix with rough seas. It's like working in a floating, rocking skyscraper. You have to come here, come here. And that's making it tough to line up the arm with the pontoon. When we fit in the, the arm to the ship, there's only clearance from one millimeter up, one millimeter down. It's like to fit in a thread in the needle. Threading a needle that weighs 40 tons is difficult, dangerous work. And it's the first time the pontoon has ever been used on a real job. It takes almost two hours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. But Jorn is happy that the pontoon is properly installed. 40 tons of the arm, 115 tons the, the tank. It looks good. Okay, Andre, hook up. Now, everything is ready for the big lift to begin and all eyes are on Jorn and his team. Stop. Stop. Jorn is one of Beluga Group's most experienced officers and was hand-picked for Bremen's first job. Captain Helt is monitoring his performance too. If Jorn does well, he could be promoted to captain. I think Jörn is a bit nervous, but uh, it's uh, normal in this situation. There's a kind of pressure, yes. Uh, a lot of surveyors, people from different companies, from the shipper, from the cargo owner. Everybody is looking to me. But Jorn isn't alone. He's got project manager Roberto Frigini and cargo superintendent Edward Lockoff on his team. Now, the best way is to position yourself here and look at the way that the they are not part of the ship's crew. They're lift specialists from head office in Germany. Roberto and Edward have spent nearly a year planning this lift using computer simulations. Generally speaking, uh, the responsibility of the lift is on the captain and chief mate. They are the hands, we are the brain. Uh, I need uh, one more deckhand here at the gangway. Computer simulations are one thing. Real heavy lifting is another. If the hook is not aligned where we're going to lift, the cargo is going to suddenly move. So we have to be very, very careful of the geometry of the lift. This is the most important aspect of the problem. Under a blistering Malaysian sun, Jorn and his team are ready to find out if their super heavy lift ship is a contender, a champion, or a washout. In the port of Kuantan, Malaysia, Beluga Bremen is ready to load two 800-ton high-tech mining machines. It's her first ever super heavy lift, and everyone is nervous. The cargo is very expensive and sensitive, so if we damage it, the whole project is for a gold mine, will be stopped. Okay, Andre, bring, bring the, the hook to the center. Bremen's two monster cranes are the strongest ever mounted on a multi-purpose heavy lift ship, but they've never been tested on a real job. Chief Officer Jorn Gafkor is in charge of lifting the autoclaves. They're three times the size of a bus and almost 60 times heavier. The hook must be straight over the cargo, otherwise it starts moving and it's too heavy for any movement. Veteran crane operator Alexander Trofimov knows that any sudden movement could spell disaster. If I, I made this command very faster, there's the ship uh, maybe, maybe crash. There's one last check of the crane hooks. We have people everywhere now watching and carefully listening from the radio what's going on. If they drop their 800-ton cargo, dozens of lives are at risk. 
On the pier, Jorn bears all the responsibility, but he must stay in constant contact with his captain. The captain is on the bridge and controlling the ballast. Beluga bridge, the list please. 1.7 to starboard. Eight floors up on the bridge, Captain Helt keeps a close watch on the ballast system as it reacts to the weight of the autoclave. 0.9 to port. Okay, 0.9. Okay, both trains stop a moment, we wait for ballast. Ballasting is a delicate and dangerous balancing act. As an autoclave is lifted on board, its enormous weight causes the ship to tilt or list. 12,000 cubic meters of water in 48 ballast tanks shift automatically to counterbalance the list and keep the ship from capsizing. No one knows if the ship's ballast is enough to offset 800 tons, even with the extra help of the stabilizer pontoon. This is the moment of truth, we say, before the cargo lift off from the trailer. To lift and load the autoclaves, Bremen's two cranes must synchronize their moves perfectly. For the crane operators, it's like trying to hammer in two nails at exactly the same time, with exactly the same pressure. So now we're gonna, ready, we're gonna lift up right now. So, Kyber is in the air now. Number two, crane, a little bit more hooked on. Crane and away! Crane and away! Almost immediately, there's a problem. You're too fast, Andre. Much too fast. Number two, crane, hooked on. The cranes are moving at a snail's pace, but it isn't slow enough. We don't keep it level, we make a mistake, it slips. That's a disaster. Don't grab the ship. Okay, very good. At the moment, okay, we, we are nice. swinging so, the cargo over the vessel. Okay. That means the lowest point of stability for the vessel. The full weight of the autoclave is now right over the ship. It's acting like a gigantic pendulum, with the slightest movement tilting the ship from side to side. It's a time of dangerous instability. And the most critical point in the lift. It's less than a meter to touch down. With 800 tons hovering over his head, Ed would make sure that the cradles ready to hold it are lined up with the strongest parts of the deck. If they aren't, the autoclave could break right through. There's another one. So the arrows are the, how to say, main girders of the ship. So when the cradle is on them, it's on the problem. With pinpoint accuracy, the autoclave is laid down. Beluga Bremen's first ever super heavy lift has taken less than an hour. That's one autoclave done, now the other one. It's a huge relief, but with dusk just a few hours away, there's no time to relax. They can't load the second autoclave in the dark. Everybody sees that it's going well, people are getting more relaxed, and that's when the mistake can happen. So the second one is not less important than the first one. Same, not moving, number two. The second lift is completed without a hitch. Less than one hour. Okay, one hour. Perfect. Beluga Bremen has won her first ever heavy lift by a knockout with a powerful one two punch. We are happy, the client is happy, and the most important captain is happy. As soon as Bremen's massive hydraulic controlled cargo doors are closed, Captain Help doesn't waste a minute casting off from the dock. For him, this voyage is finally underway. After two or three days in port, I'm really excited. Okay, and there go everything forward, please. One ton pilot.
Next stop, Shanghai, China. A five and a half day journey across the South China Sea. We make a faster cargo somewhere here. The boat will be somewhere here. But there's no time off for Jorn Gafkor. He's getting rookie officers Lars Slifer and Benny Stephenson ready to direct their first ever super heavy lift. More heavy machinery to be delivered to a gold mine in the Dominican Republic. Okay, what will be the procedure? I will do my first uh, tandem lift, means using two cranes. I never done this before, only with one crane. So one is doing the ballasting on the bridge, the other one is actually staying outside and giving the commands. It's their first big test as officers and a good chance to move up the chain of command. Yeah. Not everybody can become captain. We will see what happens for me in the future. I don't know, but for sure I will try. So that's the, that's, that's the motivation that keeps you going. Up on deck, Chief Engineer Jorn Kloser Jensen is facing a big challenge of his own. That's the hydraulic pump from the hatch cover system. A powerful hydraulic pump that opens the ship's giant cargo hatches has burned out. The color exactly means uh, overheating. The temperature was uh, more than uh, 80, 90 degrees. It would never go above 60. With the pump out of commission, the heavy cargo in Shanghai can't be loaded into the ship's hold. It's pretty important. We need to be able to open and close hatches in the next port. The chief has to fix it. Or Beluga Bremen's maiden voyage will grind to a halt. The heavy lift ship Beluga Bremen is on her way to Shanghai, China to pick up more supersized cargo. She's only six days into her six-week voyage, but the journey is in serious trouble. Chief Engineer, please. A hydraulic pump that opens her massive cargo doors is broken. Here we are, at the scene of the crime. If Chief Engineer Jan Kloser Jensen can't fix it, the ship won't be able to load cargo into her hold. Up on the bridge, there are more headaches. The Shanghai Port Authority keeps changing the location for Beluga Bremen to rendezvous with a harbour pilot. Rookie third officer Lars Slifer has never navigated a ship into Shanghai. It's one of the busiest ports in the world and he has to alter course again and again. They give you a completely different area to, to go in. The ships are coming down, ships are going up. This one is uh, crossing our course. It's a big challenge for Lars, and he's falling behind, making his course changes. Finally, Captain Helt snaps. I don't want to know what information you get before. I want to know where the position is, where we have to go. Hmm? It takes another nail-biting hour. But Lars steers Beluga Bremen where she needs to go and meets up with the pilot. Now it's harbour pilot Wu Jian Win's job to steer her safely into port. He will guide the giant superlifter 70 kilometers up the mighty Yangtze River into the narrow Huangpu and all the way to her berth. With over 60,000 ships a year using these rivers, Shanghai is the most difficult port in the world to navigate. And local knowledge of the port and its tide cycles is priceless. Well, I have been uh, here being a pilot for uh, 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 15 years. So the tidal influence is very strong. If GN Win doesn't keep a close watch on the tide, the ship could be in real danger. As the tide goes out, it exposes a 12-kilometer stretch of the river that is just five meters deep at low tide. Beluga Bremen's draft is over seven and a half meters, deep enough for it to easily run aground. But at high tide, the river's depth increases to nine meters, plenty of room for Bremen to pass safely, as long as GN Wind's timing is perfect. Our depth is 5.2 meters. And then we need a 70 meters to clear this. Yeah. 
High tide today is at 12.18. Beluga Bremen has to reach the shallows in exactly one hour and 48 minutes. For third officer Lars Slifer, it's a baptism by fire. He has to react fast to Jian Wen's instructions and adjust the ship's course constantly. So now we reduce speed because we have to overtake another vessel. There's another vessel in the forward, so we have to, now we cannot say exactly what will happen. Right now, there are over a hundred ships in the Yangtze, and all of them are trying to cross the shallows on time. It's a Shanghai rush hour, but being a big super heavy lifter helps clear the way. The pilot's timing is spot on. Weaving through traffic, Bremen rides the tide and reaches her berth right on schedule. Yeah, flag is indicating the bridge. Down in the engine room, there's more good news. Jan and his team have repaired the damaged pump. Cargo hatches can be opened, and Lars Slifer and Benny Stephenson can get ready for their first ever super heavy lift. Four giant machines called heat exchangers for the same Dominican gold mine must be loaded in under 24 hours. It's the rookie's time in the spotlight. Each heat exchanger weighs just 150 tons, a lot less than an autoclave, but they're almost as long. The rookie's instructions to the crane operators will have to be pinpoint accurate. Lars will load the first two heat exchangers, while Chief Officer Jorn Gafkor and Cargo Superintendent Edward Lopkov keep a close eye on him. Stop pumping for a moment. One wrong move, one second of hesitation, and they'll step in to prevent 150 tons from crashing down onto the ship. But Lars doesn't blink. He loads the first two heat exchangers into the cargo bay with the precision of a veteran. It was uh, very calm, very precise, very concentrated. That's important. He will be a good heavy lifter in the future, I think. So I did my first two. It's quite good. <laughs> Bene loads the last two heat exchangers. Train number two, swing to your right. As the ship's second officer, he's one rank up on Lars. But he looks a lot more nervous. A little bit nervous, but it's okay. Bene's first lift isn't going well. He's taking too much time. 150 tons dangles dangerously, threatening to crash down on the ship. With Jorn and now Captain Helt watching closely, Bene finally loads it into the cargo hold. Now he's got one more chance. And with a few pointers from Jorn, he loads the last heat exchanger all on his own. I'm more confident that he's doing less mistakes, so... More or less, he did this lift himself. It's very, how to say, little assistance from our side. It's been a challenging day for the young officers. Better for Lars, but Benet's trying not to keep score. It's always better we work as a team and not as a competitor. It's something for... Oh, so we have still two months together. <laughs> so we have to be careful about that. The rookies have both earned a good night's sleep. See that? <laughs> no way. <laughs> But the deck crew must work late into the night, welding footings and tightening chains to secure their new pieces of heavy cargo. Nothing in the holds can move. If the cargo shifted, it could sink the ship.
21 hours after Beluga Bremen arrived in Shanghai, she set sail on the longest leg of her journey, across the Pacific Ocean to one of the man-made wonders of the world. Slow ahead. After a three-week, 15,000-kilometer voyage, Beluga Bremen finally reaches the west coast of Panama. The Panama Canal is the world's best shortcut, an 80-kilometer waterway that reduces the travel around South America by 16,000 kilometers. For Beluga Bremen, that's a saving of $300,000 in fuel alone. 12,000 ships make the transit every year. They stage at anchorages, vast parking areas at either end of the canal, and then wait their turn. Beluga Bremen has arrived at the Western Anchorage, right on schedule. It's her very first transit, so she has to be inspected to confirm that the ship is in good working order and her cargo secure. If Bremen doesn't pass, she won't be allowed through. The Canal Authority can't afford any breakdowns or accidents that could halt the flow of traffic. Hello, good evening. Hi, hello. Hello, How are Captain. You? Fine, thank you. How are you, sir? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Jorn escorts Inspector Javier Mendez below deck. While the crew makes sure that their 2,200 tons of heavy cargo is safely secured. All the chains, on turn buckles, uh, everything must be in good condition, everything must be tight, laid out. If it isn't, this is what could happen. An autoclave crashing into the ship's hull would cause her to sink like a stone in just seconds. From bottom to top, Javier inspects Bremen carefully. Take a picture of this, maybe not. He's inspected a lot of ships, but never one like this. It's a chip that uh, has a very unique design. After a final check of his notes, Bremen has passed another test. Thank you, Chief. Thank you for your good combination. Thanks to you. The Luger Bremen is ready to go. And as she travels under the Bridge of the Americas, she enters one of the greatest feats of engineering in the world. It took 10 years and over twice the explosive power of the first atomic bomb to blast the Panama Canal out of rock, mud and thick jungle. Since it opened in 1914, the only thing that's changed are the ships. They're much bigger. Yeah, Bosun, bridge. Uh, we have to prepare the pilot that are right now. And that makes the pilots here just as important as they are in Shanghai. Working around the clock, canal pilots navigate every ship on the 12-hour journey through a complex system of waterways. From the west, two sets of locks raise ships 26 meters above sea level, allowing them to travel through a long, narrow channel and a series of man-made lakes to the east, where another set of locks lowers them back down to the sea. The 100-ton doors open wide, and a team of four 50-ton towing locomotives connect steel cables to Bremen's hull and pull her inside. Thank you, one hello. Their job is to keep the ship from smashing into the sides of the lock. Okay, we're now in position in the Miraflores lock, lower chamber. When the gates close, almost 100 million litres of water pour in. It takes just 10 minutes to raise the ship over 8 metres. And by the time she exits the second lock, Bremen will be 26 meters above sea level. And heading into the most dangerous section of the canal. Okay, out station, let go, tugboat out. The Gilliard Cut. At just 150 meters wide, 
it's a tight fit for big modern ships like Beluga Bremen. If a ship lost control in here, she could block traffic in both directions. By nightfall, eight hours after entering the canal, Bremen has cleared the cut. 30 kilometers of man-made lakes and is fast approaching the last set of locks at Gatun. Captain Helt can't wait to get through. I can handle my ship myself again, <laughs> not by locomotives and so on. In 30 minutes, Bremen is back at sea level. And after a polite goodbye to the pilot, Captain Helt doesn't waste a second. Wait until they are on board and then pull it. Beluga Bremen is now in the Caribbean Sea and heading for her final destination, a remote port on the northeast coast of the Dominican Republic. Her crew has traveled all over the world, but no one has ever been to Samanar. Bad news or good news? And no one knows what to expect. Now we are heading for the Samana Bay into the unknown. It's been six weeks since Beluga Bremen left Kwantan, Malaysia. And after a 20,000 kilometer journey, she's reached her final destination, Samana in the Dominican Republic. Very unknown port, if, uh, shallow water. Samana is a remote port on the Dominican's north coast and originally built to export bananas. Until the gold mine was developed a year ago, the port had been inactive for years and neither Captain Helt nor Chief Officer Jorn Gafkor has ever been here before. Do you have this island in your radar? We have no proper charts, there's no proper charts available. We have to be very careful in the final approach. These veteran sailors know that the channel into the port is narrow and weaves through a web of coral reefs. One wrong move and Bremen could run aground. We have seven meters water here, five, five meters now. Captain Help desperately needs a pilot to guide his ship into port. But the pilot is late. Good morning. We are inside the fairway already. And no pilot. Finally, the pilot answers the radio call. Samana pilot, Beluga Bremen, good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, I want to know you We are already now at the pilot station. Okay, pilot on the way. He's running a full 20 minutes late. Captain Helt's first impression of Samanar isn't a good one. That's a uh, Caribbean style. At least they've got not just one, but two pilots to guide them in. Morning. How are you? That sounds good. Speed in the moment seven. These pilots are used to working on smaller cargo and cruise ships. Half ahead. Half ahead. At almost 170 meters long, Beluga Bremen is the biggest and newest ship they have ever navigated. Three two zero. Three two zero. This is the first time. Uh, we have a ship like this. It's not what Captain Helt wants to hear. Yeah, everything okay? Everything okay. okay. As he hands them control of Beluga Bremen. Three one zero. Three one zero. It's tower twenty. It's tower twenty. The job looks easy enough. There's just one wide open pier inside the tiny harbor. Manora. 
Mickey. Mitch. Lowesting. Lowesting. Mitch. But as Bremen makes her final approach, the captain is confused by the pilot's maneuvers. How do you want to turn? We go to the pier. Bremen needs to turn left or to port. But the pilots keep steering her starboard or to the right. This is starboard. The pilots don't seem to know how to use the bow thrusters to steer the nose of the ship. If I give thrust to starboard, the line will be in the thrust. The captain is worried. His $75 million ship is on a dangerous line and is headed right at the pier. Captain Helt has had enough. We'll move. How to move there? Okay. Uh, Mr. Pilot, that is the question you have to ask if you come on board. Yeah. And not if we are maneuvering. I know because... You know? To protect his ship, he does what a captain almost never does. He asks the pilots to step aside. The only thing I know is that I can handle it better than them. So I will do it now. Tensions on the bridge are high. Still ahead. We will wait with the land until we are alongside, yeah? Okay. The pilots are just as relieved as the captain when Beluga Bremen arrives safely at the pier. All's well that ends well. Uh, this is the first time it happened here. Yeah, no problem at all. Don't worry about it. But there's plenty for the crew to worry about. It's hurricane season in the Caribbean, and the skies are growing darker by the minute. Uh, dark clouds are coming, strong wind, and for sure heavy rain. First, the heat exchangers are unloaded under Jorn's direction. Okay. Yeah, now we have to move by crane number two. Yes. Boom down and swing right. But by the time heat exchanger number four is safely on the pier, the bad weather has arrived. The job is only half done, and now they can't risk another lift. So the safety people from our client advise that everybody should leave the deck, go inside the accommodation ladder, and all operations are suspended for the time being until further notice. With the autoclaves stuck in her hold, the crew have to wait six hours for the storm to pass. Beluga Bremen's six-week delivery schedule is now in danger of being washed away. Chief Officer Jorn Gafgor and Cargo Superintendent Edward Lopkoff have to get the job back on track fast. We have three hours more to daylight to discharge with big units. Yeah, I know, but I think it will take time to organize the guys back, huh? Project manager Roberto Frigini has got an even bigger problem. We hope that the pier is not going to collapse. <laughs> a stress test has revealed that a large section of the pier could crumble under the weight of an 800-ton autoclave. They've clearly marked the danger area with a line of yellow bricks and caution barriers. Now, the very last part of the job could be the most dangerous. It is more challenging because of the environmental conditions. The pier restrictions, the pier load restrictions. Beluga Bremen will have to unload the autoclaves beyond the danger zone by extending the reach of her cranes to the far side of the pier. Even with her ballast pontoon deployed, that will push the ship's stability to its limit. Good. Yeah. Jorn gets his team ready for their final big test. Start preparing now the cables, the wires. My for lifting. Everything is ready. And Jorn gives the order for the lift to begin.
Up on the bridge, Captain Lutz Helt and Second Officer Bene Stephenson monitor the ballast system closely. This coming now to two degrees to port. Yeah, we're floating, we're in the air. It will take 10 minutes just to clear the cargo hold. Stop number three. Uh, boss, and are we above the coming? Yes, we are over. Yeah, because crane number three is very close to the limit switch, huh? So you mean that we have to turn more to the starboard side? Hovering above the hold, a sudden gust of wind could cause a disastrous shift in weight and tip the giant ship right over. Continue, spring right, boom down the gap. Okay, crane number two, spring right. All right, stop in up, boom, number three. Okay, continue, hook down. In less than an hour, the first autoclave is hovering over the pier. They'll lower it onto a platform trailer with 528 wheels that will help distribute the weight. And it better work. Roberto can only watch and pray the old pier holds. And okay, now we have it balance on the cranes, but it's definitely now the moment to cruise. All right, John, we are ready here up, so we can proceed. We have reached that pumping before that. That one side is coming tight now. The first autoclave touches down. Are you down a fight? The pier groans under the weight of 800 tons. Everyone holds their breath. The pier doesn't collapse. It's one autoclave down, one more to go. And like clockwork, autoclave number two is lifted and delivered. Good job, buddy. Good job. Thank you. Captain Helt is happy to see it hauled off the pier. Our job was to bring these autoclaves to here, to discharge it safely and undamaged. For Jorn Gafkor, it's not just a job well done. It's time to go home and I'm very happy and my family is very happy too. I can take it. And when he returns after some well-earned time off, he'll return as a captain. He will be promoted to sail on the next vessel as a captain. Even Captain Helt is moving on, ready to test drive Beluga Group's next new ship. I will go to the next new building. And for Beluga Bremen, she has passed the test with flying colors and will soon be joined by seven more super heavy lift ships. We are ready to sail now. Please send the pilot as soon as possible. But until they're built, Beluga Bremen stands alone as the mightiest ship on the seven seas.